Hey YouTube, Madre Brett here. <clears throat> I was about to start editing this creepypasta called Blue Tears that I already did a reading of, and I thought, uh, why not record this? Uh, I'm going to be uploading this some probably long time after that creepypasta is done because at the current time I have so many videos already planned and lined up, but maybe you're interested in seeing the, uh, the editing process of this whole thing, so let me just double check. Yeah, it's recording fine. I messed around with the settings a little bit, so I hope this all comes out clear, you can read everything okay. But I'll basically be explaining how I do this while I do this. Uh, my editor of choice is Adobe Premiere Pro CS 5.5, I have never tried 6. Upgrading is quite expensive. So, uh, right now we have all of the things we need, we have all of our tools we need to do this. Which is to say I've got the screenshots right here. They're all just numbered captures. The screenshots of the story. We have my PNG file of the Screamer Free video thing I put at the beginning. That's just the sequence. And I have my choice of music, which I already did. The Blue Tears MP3 is my voice. Uh, that Runes of Elf, Union Cave, Elix Forest, all that. That's the song I play during Final Thoughts. And this story, I believe, has Pokemon Tower in it. So I've got the Pokemon Tower... MP3, I like to pick a song from the game itself, so. Uh, what I always start with is just the usual drag in that. I skip to 10 seconds in because by default the picture is only 5 seconds long. I want it to be 10 seconds long. And here's a little keyboard shortcut that you're going to want to know if you use this editor. Uh, Control D at the beginning and end automatically gives you a crossfade. It just saves a lot of time. And I don't want the crossfades to be one second long, I want them to be two seconds long. Oops, there we go. So that it looks like this. See, so he's got that slow fade, holds for the eight seconds, or the six seconds rather, just completely solid, fades back out. And then I skip, uh, oops, uh, you can make that a zero. I skip to 11 seconds, one full second later is when the story proper starts. So that's where I'm going to drag in my vocals, right there. And in fact, I'm going to boost the volume on that. Usually by four works, but I kind of mess around with it a little bit uh, once we start listening to it together, because I listen to the whole thing during editing. So I'll just cut out that dead space in the beginning. And I also put in the music here. Now, the music almost always completely drowns out the vocals right away. Blue tears. <laughs> my god, yes. So. <laughs> Let's drop that by 30 decibels. Blue tears. By I. Uh, that's a little too low. Uh, let's let's try uh, 20 actually. That might be a good even ground. Blue tears. By I'm dead. Pardon me, sir. You know what? That's good. Um, although I think I'm slightly too loud. This is kind of a thing you just learn to do. Blue tears. By I'm dead. Okay, and after the first start, or the first part, this is completely unscripted as you can tell, uh, I always have it say the name of the game, or the name of the story rather, so... Blue, Blue Tears, Tears by I'm, I'm Dead. I'm Dead. There we go. So, uh, Control T is for a new title. I'm just, I default name all of them, it doesn't matter for a project like this. I don't need to ever go back and reuse these, so I don't need to name it. So it's Blue Tears, which is 200 font size. This is the font I use, by the way. Is it Birch White 80? It comes, uh, it comes as a default for, I think, all Adobe software. And I like it a lot. It really pops. And if it's not a black background, I add a shadow so that it pops out on whatever I put it on. It's my font of choice for videos, at least. So if you've ever wondered that trademark dry bread font, there you go. Don't think it's really trademark, but whatever. So I put in another crossfade. Blue tears. Oh, I was really quick on saying by blank on this one. Usually I'm not that quick about it. But okay, uh, it's by I'm dead, and I already remember he's caps locked. So by I'm dead, all one word. I like to have the title be, or the author rather, be 120 because it fits under it just nicely. And I center it like 
that, so it's all completely centered. That was the auto. I have auto save turned on, so every once in a while it just auto saves. I put that up there, and I'm gonna go into video transitions, dissolve, put a cross dissolve on that too, because the control D cross dissolve will only be on video one timeline. Limit. And this is the only gap I ever leave in, because it's always just the right amount of gap. So, I leave that in. So that's when the story starts proper. Gonna bring that back. Here we go. It's tiny. There we go, that's bigger. And now I can't read this, obviously, and there's no way you can read it at home. So what I'm gonna do is I open this up, and I wanna go to Seven Days of Creepypasta, which is where I'm keeping this special's creepypasta, or the special that I'm now editing, but the whole special's probably done by now. Uh, blue tears, open up the picture, and here we go. We've got the picture right here. I can quickly see... <laughs> forgot about that thing. I was reading it. Uh, so the last line is, but I left a dollar on the table, so I'd feel better for taking it. So I just need to keep that in mind. I've got it right here. I'm recording this with uh, XSplit, by the way is how I'm recording my screen for this. It's my first time using XSplit to actually record something. So let's see how good it is at recording desktop stuff. That was the wrong... There we go, yeah. Um, so I cross dissolve, which will automatically dissolve between the two. Want that to be as long as the dissolve. Put that in. And the result we get... As a control S, by the way, to save. That was a manual save. And spacebar is how I'm pausing and playing without clicking it. Blue Tears, by I'm Dead. Pardon me, sir. See, that looks nice. Uh, although I put the titles a little too close together. I want Blue Tears to be up a little more. By I'm Dead. And, uh, you know what? I can actually bring I'm Dead. You know what? No, uh, I'm actually happy where that was. Uh, Blue Tears can go up a little bit more. So I'm leaving most of this in, because I want you guys to get an accurate view of what it's like editing these. Okay, uh, that looks pretty nice. So, here's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna watch a little Pardon bit. Pardon me, sir. How much do you want for this? It's free. Take it. That's when I stopped recording the line. That's when I paused there. So we hit C on the keyboard, which is your cut tool. Cut, cut. Hit V again to go back to the cursor. Drag that closed, hit space again. What? Are you sure? I can pay for- I said you can take it. Now get out of here. Cut, cut. Yeah. The above- That's the bulk of this, by the way, is a lot of that. However, I'm gonna keep showing you that for a minute because something is coming up. Above was a brief exchange of words between a very edgy young man, possibly in his late twenties, and myself at a yard sale I happened by. Actually, I want to zoom in the timeline just a tad bit more, so I can more accurately cut. I always find the most interesting things at yard sales and flea markets. I'm normally there for books, but I'll occasionally happen across something else that's worth my time. You see, this isn't hard, it can just be a bit time-consuming. I didn't find any books this time around. The entire sale seemed to be comprised of children's toys, clothes for both little boys and little girls. Totally botched the word clothes. Girls as well as some items I'd expect a young married woman to use. <laughs> Not huge on the pointless detail in the beginning of this story. Silken night clothes. You know what, maybe I could uh, make that just a tad bit more quiet. It does seem a little bit loud to me. Stacks of cheesy romance novels that I had no interest in. I can't read pure romance. Yeah. Still seems kind of loud to me. Using the number pad to put those numbers in, by the way, it's quicker that way. Also, the uh, the enter on the number pad. These are just little things that you get used to when you're editing, because it speeds things up exponentially. I need something like murder or mystery to make it interesting. Jewelry, as well as several cases of makeup, most of which appeared to be half-used. I'm sure you can tell, but I actually had an open sore in my mouth when recording this. Um, I bit my lip really bad the day prior. In fact, it's still healing right now, but... Really, the only re I I wouldn't have recorded normally when I have a sore in my mouth and I can't talk properly like that, but um, 
I was under a real time constraint where I had already uploaded the first episode, and then that happened, and it's like, oh shit, so. You might notice it on a few lines that um, my mouth is salivating a lot from the cut, and uh, I'm slurring a bit because of it. I found the used makeup to be in bad taste. It's just a little behind the scenes. If you no longer had use for it, throw it away. I don't give a fuck, author, about your fucking makeup stuff. Don't try to peddle what's touched your face to other people. It's disgusting. I kept these thoughts to myself, however, as the man running the small junk sale seemed far from stable. Also, if you just walked up to the guy who's selling the stuff and you're like, Ew, cooties, I think he'd deck you. As I was about to leave- It's like my live riffing, it's like a dramatic reading. To leave, something blue peeking out from underneath a small gray bunny plush caught my eye. That line was weird and took me like seven tries. Small gray bunny plush? Colors always catch my attention. There's you in color, you fuck. Especially blue, so I lifted the plush to examine it. Who calls it a plush and not a plushie? That messed me up too. To my surprise, it was a Pokemon Blue game. Not that I had been looking for one, but I felt like experiencing a little nostalgia, even though the first generation of games wasn't my favorite. It reflects back to a much simpler time in my life. That's fantastic. Uh, what's, what's our last line again? Okay, we're not there for a while. The cartridge had the word tears written neat- If you can't already tell, and if you haven't already seen that episode, which the link will be in the description to the episode we're editing right now, uh, <laughs> I'm not big on the story. Lee in black across the image of the Blastoise. I assumed it was a nickname of some sort, perhaps the previous owner of the game cried a lot. Yes, because I'm sure they wouldn't wipe that shit off if someone wrote on their game and called him a crybaby. It was within a bunch of child's things. Perhaps they were young enough to be labeled a crybaby by others and Tears was just a nicer name. I'm not sure. I want to point out, even though I probably shouldn't, I hate my the way I pronounce S's. I, I, I lisp S's just, not, not lisp, I whistle S's just very slightly and it pisses me off. This is one of the few, uh, when I recorded this I actually forgot to put my wind sock on my microphone, so it hisses them a little bit too, it's bad. I can't go re-record the entire thing though, I just, this episode has to be up like, tonight, so. Anyway, I got the game for free, but I left a dollar on the table just so I'd feel better for taking it. And that's what I was waiting for. Did you hear how the music faded out there? I downloaded the soundtrack of the games, but uh, it naturally fades. So let's go back a little. They were young enough to be labeled a crybaby by others, and Tears was just a nicer nope. name. I'm not sure. I just timed it wrong. Okay, so that's where the, the song starts. Or I'm not sure. Let me just... Yeah. Mute that fucking asshole. Now, usually what I do is I kind of ballpark the area, and I cut there, and I have it, like, crossfade the, the songs, and you never really notice that I do that. But if I ever catch, like, a pure, like, that's right where it loops, and it's a song that does, like, a flat, full song loop like that, then I can easily, easily, easily just do this. Pew! Wow, this is a long story. So it's already got the volume set in. Go, delete the access ones, and some of those I'm going to delete anyways because I get into final thoughts at some point there, but for now we'll just keep that. And let's see how good this sounds. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Okay. How good was my loop? Better if I were to have been smart enough to do this first, but has a sound. A little rough, little rough, gotta say. Uh, let me just Beep. see if that works better. No, I know what I did wrong. I actually need to shave off a frame on this side. See, this is another little thing you just gotta get used to. You'll never notice that with my voice over it. Well, now you're going to be listening for it, but 
You know what I mean. The scene revealed when the black faded was that of the- You'll never notice, that's fantastic. So I can copy that, I can get rid of all that. Did I, uh... Hmm, yeah. Okay. Uh, copy that one. Get rid of all of you, in fact, get rid of both of you as well. And this is the one that loops well together? Hurry up! Yes! Okay, that's the proper one. Just gonna paste a bunch of them. Put that in. There we go! So the loop's already taken care of for me now. Oh, almost. Apparently those didn't quite touch. There we go. And now I can just continue with the story. The game for free, but I left a dollar on the table just so I'd feel better for taking it. When I got home, I inserted the game into my SP and turned it on. The sound of the startup screen was greatly distorted. Always is. It sort of fluctuated from being several tones lower than normal to being nothing more than a low rumble. It was... Unsettling, to say the least. Naturally, I assumed the game was faulty, but I thought I'd play through until something froze up on me. Why would you naturally think the game is faulty? Considering, like, you're seeing things you're not supposed to be seeing, not just glitches. The previous owner, this Tears person, still had a game on file. This Tears person? Mm, yeah. ...file, as would be expected with a used game. But no information about the playtime, character name, or anything else of that sort was displayed when the option was highlighted. I'm sighing during the reading. Curious, I chose the previously started game, just to see where they were with everything. Well, who wouldn't? A child was bound to have an interesting game with creative names. Keep assuming it's a child, y you don't know for sure. Insight into the innocent mindset that was slowly becoming rarer with each passing year. Fuck, you're pretentious. Upon choosing the previously saved game, I was met with a black screen in silence. I felt disappointed. The game seemed to have already messed up on me. Uh, uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Um... Oh yes, I actually missed that point there. I'm gonna have to go back and re-listen for that. Uh, so I should have already switched to the second part. Uh, where are we right now? Turn on my SP. Uh, sound... Did? Really? Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, we didn't pass it by much, but, uh, did I mess up that line? Pointed. The game seemed to have already messed up on- Avarv? <laughs> or was that in the story itself? Um... Uh, tears... Da -da 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 -da, innocent becoming... Fuck off. Uh, purely save you to silence, uh, have messed- already have messed up on me. I actually botched that line. Again, I don't have the time to re-record that line. Normally I would, but I can't do that in the middle of the recording, obviously, and I don't think many people give a shit that I fucked up that one line, so I'll let it slide this one time. Usually I'm my harshest critic. But I thought I'd play through until something froze up on me. Where was that line? See, this is another thing that happens sometimes. Tone, so something froze up on me. Oops, that was the wrong thing. Sometimes I accidentally click that. I left a dollar on the table just so I'd feel better for taking it. That was the last line of the last. Yep. Which means we drag in capture two and scaled frame size. Now, we're going to be doing more stuff with that later. Uh, not yet, though. So let's skip ahead to where we were in the story, which would be here. Zoom a little. And the line we're looking for is but curiously continued to keep me locked into the game. Onto the game. Onto the game. <laughs> okay, it should be into, but hmm. wonder if I I wonder if I realized that while I was recording it. I was just about to I've had it happen a few times where I just skimmed over a word and like auto-corrected it with my brain. And I don't intend to do that, because I like to pronounce- if things are written wrong, I'll pronounce them wrong, but... 
a few times I've actually just like mentally auto-corrected it. It's kind of frustrating, actually. And my fiance just texted me to have fun on my video. That is very nice of her. I had to turn it off when a dialog box popped up. I began to read, but the text was moving painstakingly slow. You say it like the slowness of it stopped you from being able to read it. I don't think that was intentional. I've been robbed of everything. I say you like the author is listening. I don't think the author is listening to me. Although I have had a few authors of these stories, um, before the request days, or before the uh, fan made days where people would be on my forum constantly making them for me. Back in the days when I was just like taking ones off the uh, creepypasta form to read, or the creepypasta wikia to read, um, I've had a few of those people actually come back and message me on the videos and said they enjoyed the reading, so happy they did. My title is Champion, my grandfather's respect, even my Pokémon are dead because of you. I won't stand for this. I will come to find you. Crawling in my skin. I was confused. Who was speaking? Who were they speaking to? Gary, I don't know who he's talking to. My heart rate had picked up out of what I assumed was fear. It had been a while- you assumed was fear? You can't feel your own feelings? Okay, now that we have that firmly established. While, but I knew this wasn't normal. But curiosity continued to keep me locked into the game. This is basically exactly what Brandon and I sound like, by the way, when we, whenever we read Creepypasta together for fun. is pretty much us just nitpicking the hell out of stories. It's fun. As the black screen faded away, the music belonging to the inside of the Pokémon Tower began playing perfectly. A black screen can't fade away, something else can fade in. That's just... I... How can a... <laughs> I don't know, that line is just really stupid to me. A black screen can't fade... You're looking at a black screen... This is a black screen right now. That can't fade away, a new picture can fade in. A nitpick, I know, but still. The sound obviously wasn't as broken as it appeared to be at the beginning. Okay. Oh, uh, the overall- okay, yeah, that made sense, it made sense. The scene revealed when the black faded was that of the appropriate- The black didn't fade, something else faded in. R, the Pokemon Tower. Yeah, of course it's the Pokemon Tower, because it's either Lavender Town or Pokemon Tower. The not-so-familiar-to-me sprite of your in-game rival, Blue, was standing in front of one of the many graves inside the tower. Uh, I'm starting to remember this story from when I read it now. I read it a few days ago. He stayed there for several minutes, the disturbing music continuing to play throughout to silence, before he finally said something. This ends today. For both of us. Uh, I've heard this story a thousand times. Not specifically this story, but like, I've heard, uh, a lot of people do this idea. A lot of people do this idea, where they have uh, either Gary or Blue. It's basically the same guy, but, you know, it depends on whatever they call him. Usually Blue. And they do some story where, you know, he's getting revenge on Red in some way, or revenge on the world, or... Often it has to do with that whole... That whole... <clears throat> uh, folklore from first generation of, you know, did his Raticate die on SSN? That thing. Which is such an old story, I remember that from the playground as a kid, and that was actually a pretty good story. With that, he left the tower. My screen followed him. I wonder if kids nowadays with the newer generations have, uh, fairy tales and folklore like we did as kids. I don't think they did, because, uh, internet when I was a kid, um, you know, it was there, but, like, it was dial-up. And I think it helped that I lived out in the country, so, you know, no one really had internet. We had, like, dial-up and we never used it. When I grew up, so until I was like you know, ten, when I moved to moved to a suburbia, then a city. But um, yeah, I wonder if kids nowadays grow up like that. Like I had all kinds of, we had all kinds of urban legends about Pokemon on the playground, and like you know, half of them were fake. But we found some pretty cool glitches. As he stood outside the tower, the music did not change to the Lavender Town's normal depressing music. Rather, the haunting tune from inside the graveyard continued to play through on a loop. Haunting. As much as I wanted to turn the music down, I couldn't bring myself to do so. Okay. I couldn't move the character after that. 
I couldn't tell if it was another assumed glitch of the clearly hacked game. Another assumed glitch? Do you mean that you're assuming it's a glitch, or that it's an assumed glitch? Because considering you're the only one with this game currently, there can be no consensus on this. Wrong word choice. Or if it was the hesitation on the character's part. You're already, you're already assuming a lot of this game. Also, just to clarify what I said about internet, about like I, how I was saying like the internet would make these folklore things not as common, because uh, the reason I say that is because you can easily verify with Google now you know, what's true and what's not. Back in the day, we didn't, we didn't, like, sites like GameFAQs existed, although G GameFAQs was only made in, like, 1999, 2000, maybe. So, when Pokemon came out, GameFAQs didn't exist yet, I don't think. And if it did, we were on dial-up. Uh, so, I remember, uh, and this, pausing a minute for story time with my dry bread, uh, one of the biggest playground ones, and it's funny how, like, every school had different legends about Pokemon. One of the biggest one for us uh, was you, uh, you know how there's water when you're walking to the SS hand? How there's, like, you get past the guy, you show him, you flash a ticket, you walk past him, there's that little bridge that you don't actually get to control walking on, I don't think. And there's the water there. Well, apparently, uh, there was a myth where you could surf to the right there. And how you could actually get there to surf was debatable. Some people said you had to, like, beat the Elite Four a certain amount of times. Some people said, you know, just, like, trade in a Pokemon with Surf. Stuff like that. None of it actually worked, though. Um, and you could surf to the right, and if you surf to the right for, like, an hour or something, you'll eventually get to a little piece of land with a truck, and if you had a level 100 Mewtwo with strength, then he could throw the truck, and underneath of the truck would be a level 5 Mew, a level 100 Golden Voltorb, and a, and a second Master Ball. And of course, it was completely ridiculous. But we, a lot of people bought it back then. That was the kind of folklore that we had around Pokemon back in the day. And I'm wondering if... I'm wondering if uh, people, like kids nowadays, who are growing up with different generations, either than first and second, had a tiny bit of folklore. But that's around when, you know, most people had Google readily available to them. I'm just wondering if... Uh, if people growing up with, like, third gen onwards, if they've got legends like that that weren't just easily debunked. Because it was a really cool feeling. After another minute, he finally spoke again. Fly. Even though there was no voice connected to the character in the game, with the speed in which the text moved, there was an almost obvious feel of depression around him. Okay. Hold on, what's the next line I'm looking for again? I keep forgetting. Uh, I passed it again, didn't I? Where is the word fly? Hey, you're free. Hey, it stands for both of us. Press the action. Fly. Um. Fly, there we go. Okay, we passed it by quite a bit. Okay, we're gonna have to go back and hunt for it again. I'm getting caught up in story time. Patient on the character's part. Music. Rather minutes. The disturbing music continues. Are they talking with a uh, disturbing music? Perfectly sound broken. Uh, disturbing mis music continued. Not so familiar rival. Silence. Back more. Beginning. The scene revealed when the black faded. The black. Scene revealed when the black faded. We're almost there. The last line is uh, curiously continued. Locked into the game. But curiosity continued to keep. There we go. That's picture three. Uh, I blame that I have a case of the dumb, and I cannot brain today. There we go. And yes, yeah, sometimes things like me just forgetting what line I'm waiting for does make it take longer. Okay, I'm coming for you. That's an easy one to remember. I'm forgetting a lot more than I usually do, but then again, I'm not used to recording this. I opened the start menu and checked Blue's party. All he had was a Pidgeot, which had no level. I checked its stats... The only move it knew was the requested action of fly, and all its stats, except for health, were at zero. You could hear my saliva in my mouth in a few of those lines. That's why I almost never record when I'm hungry, or when I have a sore, like an open sore in my mouth from like biting my lip, because that also makes me salivate a lot. Um, my microphone is a very good studio microphone that 
When I get very close to it, do my microphone voice. For creepypasta voiceovers, um, you can actually hear me salivating because it's such a powerful microphone. So it sounds really gross, so I suppressed it as much as I could. Uh, I, I actually had to get rid of a few takes just because I thought it was too loud when I listened back to it. I guess for some reason I thought at the time that was quiet enough. Maybe you wouldn't notice it if I didn't point it out. I, I don't know. Odd as I found this, I didn't question it and chose to fly. You found it odd, but you didn't question it. No, you just questioned it. When the map opened up, it was black save for one square that was marked Mount Silver. I knew this was impossible. You know, I'm not even opposed to the idea of Mount Silver in first generation. I think that could be creepy if used right. Mount Silver was in Johto, which had yet to have been introduced in the original Pokemon games. The point of putting Mount Silver in this, though, didn't really make any sense. Regardless, it was my only destination, so I chose it. The typical animation of the trainer sprite turning into the bird sprite and flying took place, and, now. sure enough, I landed in front of the cave entrance to Mount Silver. Yep. Actually, when you fly there, you don't land in front of the cave entrance, you fly in front of the, uh, the Poke Center, I believe. Rather than having the sprite shift back to Blue's sprite, his image moved to the left of Pidgeot's sprite. They faced each other for a minute before a sound much like that of ent- You know, nitpick just came to mind. Um, you don't need to say sprite every time. Future creepypasta writers. You don't need to say sprite every time when you're talking about them. For some word variation, just refer to it as them, you know? Uh, instead of like blue sprite, every once in a while just say blue. We know who you're talking about. So it gives a little bit more word variety. Uh, you don't need to bust open a thesaurus and look for, like, different versions of the word sprite. I don't think there really are any in English. But, you know, you can call it something... To, if you say sprite over and over and over, it starts to kind of sound ridiculous. So, you know, don't switch it up every other one. In fact, you should probably use the word sprite more often, unless you're trying to go for a more personal feel. But, uh, just pro tip, keep that in mind. Entering or exiting a room played, but in a much higher tone. It sounded as if something had broken. Okay. When Blue sp Wait, hold, was that quick, cut too quick? Something had broken. When Blue spoke yet again. Uh, you know, that one was a little close. I'm just gonna... ...had broken. When Blue sp That's nicer. Blue spoke yet again. Fly away. You're free. I began to assume the noise was the sound the of a Pokeball breaking. Of, uh, this particular picture. How long is this one? Seven? Seven? And I think the last one's a short one. The Pidgeot cried out once more before doing as his former master commanded and flying away. You know, they really haven't earned this suspension of disbelief of having, like, literal cutscenes. After his final Pokémon flew away, the haunting music continued to play. He faced the entrance. I'm coming, I'm coming for you. For you. I'm coming for you, Mr. Nick. Ooh, wait, <laughs> is this the story where I did the James voice? I now had the impression that this was a mission of revenge, and with the way he was speaking, it was revenge of a dark sort. I don't know if it's this story or the next story that I did the James voice in. It dawned on me to check the items he had on him. I don't know why this thought crossed my mind, but given the ongoing- Oh right, I gotta um, check the next one. Uh, I'm looking for uh, only a moment to choose item, so obviously he chose it. Going circumstances. Was there a typo around here? I remember when I was reading it there was a typo, but it, the typo was pronounced the same as the actual word. Or rather it was pronounced the same as another word, so it's really hard to notice. It has something to do with choose, I think. I felt there would be- It uh, could have been another story though be something there, and there was. I don't mind when they do that. When they do, I thought something was there, and there was. I don't mind that because it lets me break out a silly voice. Although I, tr I try and make- if I do a silly voice for a story, I like to make it a little bit more subtle. There was only one item on the list. Knife. An item that clearly wasn't programmed into the game under normal Ooh, circumstances. No! Anytime I pick- Was that me cutting? 
That was a short one. Usually a premiere or premiere. Usually a audition doesn't do that. Anytime I pick. Every time I start and stop a recording, like uh, a line with premiere, premiere. I keep saying premiere with uh, Adobe Audition. What I record my vocals with. Uh, it adds like uh, it adds a little bit of space on the beginning and end of white space, so that you don't hear me clicking to start and stop recording. Uh, usually it doesn't give it that short though. Picked the option just to see what it did. Blue said, not yet. Not yet. After that, I was unable to control the character anymore. You could barely control the character for most of this. It was as if he wanted me to get him there and see the single item just to get the gist of what he might be planning. I'm sure he did. But that was it. The rest was all his own. <gasps> okay, we got like 10 minutes left of this. Uh, actually, less than 10 minutes because A, that's counting some music overlap. It's more like seven minutes, or it's more like a, yeah, we got like seven, or we got ten more minutes in this. Also, it's going to be less uh, runtime in the end because we're making these small cuts, and it shaves off a second every, like, two cuts, so. Blue stepped into the cave as he trekked through the stone maze of the cave. He never encountered any Pokemon, but I could faintly hear distorted cries mixed in with the music. I'm not sure. The reason I'm making these cuts, by the way... It speeds up the pace of things a lot and lets you hear as much stuff without getting like lost or like it being too fast in a short amount of time. Listen to what this if I were to not do these cuts, this is what it sound, would sound like. I'm not sure. But I believe you see it's weird. And if I were to make the cut mixed in with the music. I'm not sure. But I believe they could much better. I like it. They could feel the negative emotions. It's kind of a weird line to pick because the two lines are supposed to go together. They just put a period when they're not supposed to. They should have put a comma there, but, you know. It's coming off blue, and they cried out in concern. This is a better example. Look at that long-ass pause. And they cried out in concern. Finally- That was like a full second and a half or something. Concern. Finally- Much better. He reached also save just in case reached the know. chamber that harbored red in the gold and silver games. Is it bad that I'm listening to the music more than the story now? Blue's pace slowed a little as he approached his rival, and the music, dark as it was already, lowered considerably, making it infinitely darker. One could say it's blacker than black, y'all. As the two rivals faced each other, and Red simply greeted Blue with the silence I'd become accustomed to in Pokemon Gold. It's a weird line. However, Blue didn't take this very well as he showed it in apparent anger. <laughs> Don't ignore me like you have everything and everyone else. See, there's one time when my uh, when my slight Canadian dandy accent doesn't come in uh, doesn't come in handy. I probably should have just gone back to country folk speak that I grew up with and uh, slurred half that shit. Because it sounds kind of awkward with how punctual it is. A battle ensued, but the normal music didn't- I don't remember what Gary sounds like anyway, so I didn't even bother trying to go for that. ...in play. The darkened music of Pokemon Tower continued. Yes, the music, it's so dark! Listen to this dark-ass music! Doo doo doo. No, it's not dark. It's barely even haunting. I don't know why some people are like, Pokemon Tower, if we use the music from it, it's scary. No, Pokemon Tower is a creepy thing, kinda. But uh, it's it's a, you could do ideas with it, although it's really, really overdone. The music's not creepy. <laughs> the music without the tower is not creepy at all. By this time, other people were home and were becoming quite annoyed with the volume of my music. That whole line didn't need to be there. So I was forced to put in headphones, as I couldn't bring myself to actually lower the volume. So that line was there so that they could explain putting headphones on. Not only did that line not have to be there and just distracted you from the story, but, uh... Can you just say you wear headphones because you like it? You, know, you had headphones from the start? Better yet, you don't even need the headphones detail because just wait till you hear the payoff if you haven't already. There's no payoff for that. It's just like, oh, it was really loud. Headphones. You could have had that come out your speaker. Who cares? That is such a minor nothing detail that you didn't need to take away from the story and distract people from the story to write about it. Yeah. Proofread said to friends. As disturbing as it was, the music had some sort of hold on me. 
I should have retook that line. That was an awkward one. Some s horde of light, hold on me. It fucking sounds weird. I stared at the game screen as the battle opened up. Why'd I cut there? Is, uh, next one is probably awkward. That's probably why I cut there. Obviously, since Blue had no Pokemon, he never called anything out. Neither did Red. It's not an awkward line. Why'd I cut there? The battle option box with the four options fight, Pokemon, item, and run weren't there at all. I think I'm nearing the end of this, uh, this screenshot. Uh, oh yeah, we're like a line away. All there was to choose at the moment was item. So obviously, he chose it. Yes, obviously. You didn't need to point it out. You could have just had the next line start with, he chose item and. Selected knife, like... Minor detail, but uh, it's noticeable. Okay. More than halfway done, the non... Oops. More than halfway done, the non... Final thoughts section. And the final thoughts section's nicer, because I just need to focus on cutting, I don't need to look for certain lines. See you in hell. He faced me, okay, that's what I'm looking for. The only item there to use was the one I had mentioned before. Knife. Knife. <laughs> there we go. It was quickly selected on its own, and went back to the battle screen. Now the only battle option was fight. In the fight menu, Blue only had one attack at his disposal. Murder. I couldn't regain control of the game. There was no option to run. I couldn't bring myself to turn the game off, and end what had quickly become a disturbing experience. Yes, so disturbing. I've heard this a thousand times. The only choice there was was to sit there and allow Blue to murder Red. See what happens when I take requests from people? Some people give me great requests, like, um, I actually stop- I'm, I'm in the middle of reading uh, Glitchlet, and so far I'm really liking it. And then I re get requests like this, like, this- these seven episodes are some- are- I picked the most requested ones that I've gotten. Blue Tears was requested for, from a few people. This sucks! After selecting the attack, Blue shouted, This is for everything! And a typical attack animation much like Tackle played out. Only, instead of a single strike, Blue attacked repeatedly. It was like fairy swipes, but actually did damage! The dark music in the background began to pick up its pace and become more high pit. You know, if I wanted, I could actually crank up the speed on this. Uh, maintain audio pitch? Nah. I wanna fucking double that shit. If I wanted, I could go the whole nine. More high pitched. I'm gonna put an put an audio put an audio constant power in there. It become more high pitched. But no, because I'm not gonna. Because I know for a fact the story never says when it goes back down to normal, so I'm not gonna bother with that. Yeah, you know, I, I did that effort for Pokemon Lost Silver. Put a lot of effort into that one, although it's like my least watched creepypasta is when I did Lost Silver. ...background began to pick up its pace and become more high-pitched. It was painful to listen to as it vibrated through my headphones, but I never removed them. That's your payoff. <laughs> Worth it, right? Red Sprite flickered in and out as he took damage, and as his health dwindled to zero... A gurgled screeching noise broke through the noise of the music, replacing- That must have been a really awkward line if I cut midline. I almost never do that. It always sounds awkward when I have to cut midline like that. Replacing it only briefly- Eesh, that's rough. There's not much I can do about that. Uh... Who? <laughs> Replacing it only briefly as- Wow, that actually kind of helped a little. That was a real crapshoot. As red spray- It just kind of softened it a little. <laughs> One of my cats just sneezed. Spray faded into something that looked more like a decaying body. Uh no! It's now phase- See, the story's now gone into magic territory. You can't actually change sprites in these games, uh, unless you re-solder the game. <laughs> 
It looks like a decaying corpse. Because gore is instantly scary. Um. Stupid mirror. He selected suicide. Oh, <laughs> I've read so many bad stories that didn't even make it to the cutting table, and they're a lot like this. Before fading away completely with the screech. I haven't eaten today yet. I'm gonna have the biggest sandwich when I'm done this. My heart was pounding. I was beginning to get a throbbing headache, and yet my eyes remained glued to the screen as the remainder of the scene played out. I wish I could switch to the webcam right now so you guys could see my face in special yellow vision because it's a $3 webcam. But my webcam actually stopped working a couple of days ago. <sighs> one day when I have money, I think I'll buy myself a nice one. That won't be for a while. Maybe one day these creepypastas will bring me all the way up to YouTube stardom, and I will actually get enough money to feed myself. As the music replaced the screen once again, another dialog box popped up. I'm sorry. Rewind. The screen once again played out. As the music replaced the screen once again, another- As the music replaced the screen? What? Did I say that right? Uh, for everything, attack repeatedly, spray flicker, dare la la, decaying corpse, heart pounding, horrible throbbing headache. As the music replaced the screen once again. I didn't fuck up that line. The fuck does that mean? Do they mean that music started playing and the screen faded out? Proofread send to friends, what the hell? Another dialogue box popped up as Blue spoke yet again. See you in hell. I'll leave that one in because uh, that was actually a bunch of ellipses. And I'm not gonna actually pause for like the fucking minute they want me to there, or else the story would never end. Or rather, it would end. <laughs> it would end one minute longer than the runtime of this edit. The battle option popped up again. To be literal, that is. Fight remained the only option. Blue selected it yet again, but instead of murder, the He's attack like option available was suicide. suicide. There was a moment of hesitation, but Blue finally attacked himself with less fury than he had read. With the tackle animation meaning he lunged forwards at nothing. As his own health fell to zero, a lowered, gurgled screech replaced the high-pitched Pokémon Tower music. His sprite faded away. How can you have a gurgled screech? How can you have a low screech, for that matter? A screech by definition is high-pitched. Only when the proofread said in France. Decayed sprite faded in. He wasn't facing the battlefield. He faced me. Now, funny story. It's impossible. Funny story. I've actually had someone comment the other week, um, saying that I should make a T-shirt that says uh, "Proofread said in France." I've actually thought about it because that might actually be kind of fun. If I ever were to get on screen during a creepypasta for whatever reason, I would want to be wearing a shirt that said "Proofread said to France" because that'd be hilarious. I don't think anyone would buy the shirt though. Maybe one day, but right now, I do not have a big enough fan base to actually have people wanting t-shirts. But god, I would want a t-shirt. And in fact, I would have it just be black t-shirt with white text in the font I use in these creep passives, and it just says, proofread, comma, send to friends. Oh man, I would wear that in a heartbeat. His screech continues. And then, I don't know, the back of it will have, like, YouTube URL? I don't know. I can think of something better than that for the back of it. It's gotta have something on the back. Can't just be plain. Continued on, growing in volume to the point where the pain it caused equaled that of a migraine, and yet I still kept the headphones in. I don't know if you can hear my stomach. It's uh, growling quite a bit. Microphone's probably auto-adjusting that out because it's too far away from the mic. My eyes locked onto the dead, hollow eyes of Blue as he continued to scream before the screen began to flicker. What time is it? It's noon? I haven't eaten in 13 hours. Love being poor. It was slow at first, but it quickly picked up to a rapid strobe effect. The scream grew in volume and pitch one more time before the screen simply cut to black. No. Uh, oh right, he faced me. We passed that line. It wasn't long ago. Before the screen began to flip migraine. And yet, I still kept the headphones in Battlefield. Idiot. He faced me. Faced me. 
This is second from last picture. We're almost done this story. My author's notes must be really long if, um, my author's notes. My, um, see you in hell. My, uh, my Maya. My final thoughts must be really long on this one. I held my breath. My heart pounded so hard against my chest that it hurt. That's impossible. I deeply hoped that it was over. You're not fucking like Wily e. Coyote falling in love. But considering the fact that I couldn't move, or even hear any noise outside of my headphones, I fearfully assumed that it wasn't. And I was right. You know, you can do that once or twice in a story, I think you're going a little overkill though. Also, you haven't, o you haven't earned cool lines like that. I am dead. White lettering began slowly typing across the black screen, and as Do you hear that shit? I am hungry. As for each word formed, I read Who? Huh? As for each word formed, I read As for each for form, I read Okay, it was supposed to end on a high note like that. Okay. At first I thought I was just my vocal inflection was shitting the bed. Read I finally got my revenge. The life you ruined is now faded away. But do Is now faded away. Yep. Should be has. I don't think it's over yet. Proofread send friends. For yet. My suffering has ended, but yours has only begun. No, you're dead. I'll be watching your strife with a grin on my face. And when it all ends, I'll see you in hell. Unless you're talking into the player, if so, what's your beef with the player? Though I had a full battery just a moment ago, the light turned red and the system shut off. Via Pokemon magic. My nose began to spill blood for several minutes. Via Pokemon magic. And I died of blood loss. I'll so you're spilling blood, you're pouring blood for several minutes. However, you were in a part of your house earlier in which the, s the sound from your speakers was bugging other people in the house, so you had to put on headphones. So you're, like, in a living room or something. There's no way they're going to be hearing you through the doors loud enough to be bugging them. So you just, you're sitting there playing this game in the middle of your living room. All of a sudden, your nose erupts like a volcano of blood. <laughs> okay. I'll never be able to describe the terror I felt afterwards. Or couldn't feel due to blood loss when I passed out. I'll never be able to describe the terror I still feel. What's the line we're looking for? Murdered six-year-old son, then killed himself, ellipsis. You see, the very next day on the news, they announced that the very same man I purchased mm -hmm. the game yep. from, I won't release his name, had called the police saying that he had killed his wife three days prior and buried her in the backyard. When they reached his house, they found him by the phone, dead. <gasps> Why? I don't know, never explained! He had slit his throat and... Because the author wanted a scary ending and couldn't think of a creative one. Ace. And committed suicide. It was also mentioned that several weeks ago, his eight-year-old son had murdered their six-year-old son and then killed himself. Man, you didn't already see that shit in the news? Okay, that was the last line, right? Yep. And ends on credited I'm dead. Uh, never play Blue Tears. Doesn't that mean that he's planning to sell it before he dies? Assuming he's going to die? Okay, we don't need to refer back to that picture anymore. I assumed that the game had done all of this, and I'm next. I don't know how much longer I have, nor do I know who will die at my hand. But you deserve to know this. Never play Blue Tears. That's a message to you guys at home. Never play Blue Tears. Some fucked up shit. Okay, uh, we'll go to... Mm, uh, you know, that's overkill. Yeah. So that'll cut out. That can cut. And we'll have that crossfade stretch to there. But you deserve to know this. Never play Blue Tears. 
full that second one. later is when we put in final thoughts, which is also 200. 80, 120, and 200 are kind of my go-to sizes for most things. Have that perfectly centered. Put a crossfade on that shit. Throw in the music here, which will be negative 30, as it always is, which is a good audio balance for it. And we need to go back and bip, 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 bip. There, the pictures are always there now. And now we just, uh, you know, I can just page up for this part. Normally, I, I don't like to use page up actually, just because um, my mouse is always in that area, anyways. But for something like this, where I'm just gonna be mashing it, it's easier on the hand to just do page up. And next one is the first one. Yeah, we're good for crossfade. So uh, this whole part part of the story, the actual story part, is completely done and ready for upload. Like that's completely done. And it looks like uh, this is not long enough, so let's just get that fade ready. Let's let's uh, skip ahead and do that ahead of time. <laughs> It's one of my favorite songs in the game. That's why I use it. It's in uh, second generation. The fuck? Oh, right, it's in this line. Yeah! Boy. Gotta put another one in. That was Blue Tears by I'm Dead. Final thoughts? Bad. <laughs> uh, I forgot I said it so bluntly. That was fun. I like that. Right off the bat, we start with a garage sale with a creepy guy selling a Pokemon game. Yep. This has been done so many times that it is one of the most irritating cliches. People planning to write their own story, please take note and yeah. do not do this. It's been done to death. Yeah, I'm with you, buddy. This is my kind of guy. I'd like to cut at his jib. Another problem I have is that the character seems kind of pretentious. I don't know yep. if the character was written like this by design, or if the author just writes in a pretentious way. Probably just the, how the author writes. But I get a feeling it's just the way the author writes. I love Final Thoughts. I'm good at it. I like it. It makes it harder to relate. I cut a little early there. It makes it har That's better. harder to relate to the main character when they say irrelevant lines like insight into the innocent mindset that was slowly becoming rarer with each passing year. He said, well, he, uh, he said, well, he, he, uh, was it shook his brandy in his glass? Yeah, well, what's it called? There's a specific name for when you're, when you're spinning your brandy, you know, shaking it, spinning it, spiraling it. I don't know. Did I breathe there? Am I continuing to the next line? Here. I breathed there, but I wasn't supposed to. <laughs> Can I fix that? Here. It... If I just... Passing year. It just makes... Way better. It makes me want to say, no, no it's not. You'd know that if you put more than a second's thought into it. Stop trying to sound deep and get on with the story. So tempted to just say shut the fuck up there, but... I thought I'd be a little bit classy, a little bit highbrow, shake my own brandy. It's like the author wanted to put in bits of social commentary but didn't have any message of substance to put in. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Uh, I forgot what I said to my final thoughts here, I like this. Yet another problem is that the story was clearly not proofread. My favorite example Definitely. is the line, The scene revealed when the black faded was of the appropriate are the Pokemon Tower. 
Oh my god, I didn't even catch that this time through. Holy shit. It's like the worst line. Also, I am smiling so wide right now. I wish I had a working webcam. None of this sentence made any sense. I totally agree. I think I say it twice. I can only assume the author was trying to say that when the blackness faded, it was revealed that the character was in Pokemon Tower. When the blackness faded, it was revealed that it was in fact Michael Jackson. Tower. But that sure as hell wasn't what was actually written. I'm going to read off what was said one more time, because it still baffles me. Should've put reverb on this second one, but I don't think I put any effects on it. The scene revealed when the black faded was of the appropriate R, the Pokemon Tower. The fuck. <laughs> I should've said it in, like, epic voice and then put reverb on it. If I did say it in, like, a no 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 voice, then I think I would put uh, reverb on it. That'd be funny. I, I should do that next time something like that comes up. The whole blue murdering red thing was probably meant to be a takeoff that old Pokemon bit of folklore. That red killed blue's eradicate on the yep. SSN, as it's the last time blue has eradicate. And next time you see him is in Pokemon Tower, a graveyard. I never forgot how Pokemon Tower is a graveyard. Like, they say it is, but like, what, are they burying them under the floorboards? What? That being said, it never ties back into the overall plot in any way and was completely pointless other than trying to seem creepy without actually being of substance. Worst of all, the ending. Yep. I think this is the third story in a row with a bad ending. The guy who sold the yep. row with a bad ending. The guy who Why did I say that so fast? Story in a row with a bad ending. Why did I say that so fast? Weird. The guy who sold the game's kids killed each other, then the owner ki Well, one killed the other, committed suicide, you know what I'm saying. ...killed his wife and himself the same way Blue did in the game. You know, if they weren't referencing, referencing the eradicate thing, is this just like completely pointless kills them, never explained? You know, uh, the, the reader can come up with their own reasoning? Because, you know, I like open-ended stories where the where the reader can create their own ending, but if the rest of the story is shit, then no one gives a shit, so... Yay, you didn't do it well. The main character then gets a horrible bloody nose, and explains that it may happen to him too and not to play the game. Not only is it stupid and completely unexplained why anyone would die because of this game, but who is he telling to never play the game? Exactly what I was thinking. It's almost like he's a mind reader. If he is aware that it's evil and he thinks he will kill someone then himself like they did before him, why not destroy the game? What, is he just gonna sell it like the last guy did? I think it's more likely that the author just wanted this story to end on some creepy line so badly that they didn't stop and realize that it made no damn sense. Damn. That's it for this story in the- Okay, hold on, if that's- if that's the end of my final thoughts, then I wanna extend that silence a little. Sense. That's it for- It's a little too long. That's it for this story in the third day of a creepypasta a day. Hell yeah. If you like the video, you should check out the weekly charity stream that I co-host called Pass the Controller, please. No, seriously, check it out. It's awesome. Every Friday, 5 till 7 p.m. EST. I'm there every week. You're the one. You're seeing my screen. I've only ever been not been there like two weeks, I think. And one time it was because my hard drive died. It goes live over on Twitch TV every Friday from five till seven p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The link to that Twitch channel is in the description of this video. Support sick children. Come to the stream. Tune in again tomorrow when I'll be reading Pokemon Blood Edition. And every Saturday. <laughs> I think it was that story that had the really dumb line with the and the James voice. You already know what I'm talking about if you've seen that one. Uh, if you haven't, go check out the playlist in the description and check out Pokemon Blo uh, Blood Edition. Because at one point James talks and I have to do my James voice, and my James voice is not very good, but it's really fun to do. Saturday when I read creepypastas written by our very own community over on my forum. Until next time, sweet, sweet dreams. dreams. 
every time I, this is a little behind the scenes again, every time I say sweet dreams, I immediately think of uh, sweet dreams are made of this, uh, I've got a mind to disagree, or no, you've got a mind to, I don't remember the lyrics to that song very well. Sweet dreams are made of this. Uh, something in mind to dis- I don't remember this- Ah, that's bugging me now. Why don't I remember? I remember every other week when I say sweet dreams. Written by our very own community over on my forum. Until next time, sweet dreams. A solid ending to a shitty story. So, that entire thing is done now. Um... Got all the music in, got all the cuts in, got all the fades put in, got my little screamer free video entrance, so good. Control M. And just give it a second, it always takes a second. Yeah, the whole thing looks good. I like to have maximum bitrate for these of three. Because any lower and it starts to kinda of lower the audio quality as well. Uh, target bitrate is, like, the size we're going for of how many megabytes per second. So the more, the higher the quality of the video. Um, yeah, 60 frames per second, not the frame rate really matters a whole lot on this. It gives me an estimated file size, but on creepypasta it always overshoots. Usually it overshoots by, like, it's saying it's going to be, like, 400 megabytes. It's, it's probably going to be more, like, 200, 250 the creepypastas are a very small file size because there's no actual video going, you know, it's just... It's screenshots, there's no actual motion. It's screenshots, it's fades, it's music. Although my audio is really high quality, audio is very, 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 like... It's, uh... Audio is very small file size. So if this opens in my media encoder, I hit the play button, it encodes. Uh, creepypastas take almost no time to actually encode on this, even in the high quality I do it. Um, it only takes, like, what? <laughs> it takes about half the runtime of the video to encode, which is good, because on most videos, uh, it takes more than the runtime of the video to encode. So, all I do is I hit that, I hit that play button, it'll render out in about eight minutes, I come back, it'll be done, and uh, the whole thing will be, the file will be done, it'll be on my desktop, that's where I like it to render to. I'll place it in my own category of files to keep it, you know, keep it well categorized and organized. And then I upload it to YouTube, schedule it to go live at 8 in the morning EST, like I always do. And then, um, you'll be seeing this go live and, well, you already saw this go live because the video you're watching right now, which I'm going to edit right after, comes later. So, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this little peek into what it's like editing these crude passages. I think I've been going for like maybe a half an hour. I don't know. There's no timer on this kind of recording. If you think your computer's about to shut down, that was actually the noise of me getting an email on YouTube, which was probably a comment. And um, yeah, I guess that's it. Thank you all for watching, and until next time, have a nice day.